Day one begins with fire ants and army ants settling in, completely unaware how brutal this would become. The fire ant scouts spread fast, marking every inch as if planning expansion before the army ants noticed. Army ant troops moved with unsettling discipline, forming organized columns that hinted at future battles ahead. Both species paused near the boundary, sensing tension rising, even though no direct conflict had started yet. Fire ants laid dense pheromone highways, expanding territory faster than expected and signaling their aggressive strategy. Army ant scouts infiltrated narrow tunnels silently, gathering intel with cold precision that felt almost strategic. By day six, the fire ants built vast chambers, turning simple soil into a fortress ready for coming conflict. The army ants focused on brood growth, preparing waves of soldiers before facing their aggressive neighbors. Fresh fire ant larvae emerged rapidly, boosting population and accelerating preparation for resource-driven warfare. Their queen produced non-stop, protected by loyal workers who formed a living shield around her chamber. Fire ant hunters captured prey twice their size, fueling rapid growth and supporting their expanding empire. Army ant raids displayed terrifying speed, shredding prey with mechanical rhythm that wasted nothing. By day 12, overlapping scent trails signaled collision, proving neither colony planned to retreat. Fire ant mages patrolled boldly, mandibles ready as if expecting the first clash at any moment. Army ant soldiers locked bodies together, engineering a frontline wall unmatched in defensive coordination. The fire ants stored protein aggressively, preparing energy reserves essential for long-term territorial warfare. Army ant paths grew longer daily, inching closer with strategic intention that felt unmistakably hostile. Fire ants sensed intrusion and activated alarm trails, mobilizing soldiers in seconds with explosive urgency. Army ants compressed their lines, preparing countermeasures against any unexpected fire ant assault. By day 15, the two colonies stood face to face, tension rising like a storm that refused to break. Fire ant scouts pushed deeper toward enemy ground, testing weak points and probing army ant defenses carefully. Army ant sensors picked up fire ant scent traces, triggering immediate internal alerts across their raiding network. To prepare for retaliation, fire ant workers strengthened entrances, compacting walls for better defensive advantage. Army ants shifted vulnerable larvae deeper inside, ensuring brood safety before open conflict erupted. Fire ant elite soldiers gathered in tight clusters, mandibles open, as if waiting for an imminent command. Army ant columns shaped into precision attack routes, aligning like a living machine preparing tactical charges. Fire ant scouts stepped into the neutral line, provoking small skirmishes meant to measure enemy reactions. Army ants responded instantly, eliminating isolated fire ant scouts with brutal efficiency and cold synchronization. Fire ants recovered their fallen quickly, analyzing enemy attack patterns through pheromone imprints left on bodies. Army ant soldiers sealed flanks, fortifying edges to prevent any fire ant infiltration attempts overnight. The fire ant queen boosted output, knowing larger numbers were critical before full-scale confrontation erupted. Army ant brood matured quickly, giving the colony fresh soldiers trained through instinct to raid relentlessly. Fire ant workers created new upper routes, forming bypass channels designed for surprise flanking maneuvers. Army ant scouts tapped walls, learning fire ant tunnel structure through subtle seismic clues. Minor fights erupted near the boundary, each side testing strength without committing full forces yet. A fire ant soldier released alarm pheromones, triggering troop movement like sparks catching dry tinder. Army ant soldiers reconfigured positions instantly, reacting with coordinated precision to counter rising fire ant aggression. Fire ant workers dragged stones and bark to reinforce choke points before the conflict intensified further. Army ant engineers created living bridges, enabling rapid surges into contested ground when needed. By day 20, tension thickened, 
both colonies feeling the silent pull toward the inevitable first major battle. Fire Ant soldiers clustered tightly at tunnel exits, tension rising like compressed springs waiting to unleash force. Army Ant Captains pulsed rapid pheromone commands through ranks, triggering synchronized shivers along the entire column. Fire Ant sensors picked up rhythmic tremors, confirming Army Ant movement approaching dangerously close. Army Ants slowed their march, adjusting patterns to mask vibrations and conceal their exact numbers. Fire Ant workers layered sticky soil mixtures, crafting hidden collapse traps designed to bury attackers instantly. Unsuspecting Army Ant Scouts crossed the booby-trapped zone, unaware the soil beneath them was engineered to fail. The trap released suddenly, sending a wave of loose debris swallowing the lead scouts in seconds. Army ants surged forward instantly, retrieving trapped soldiers with unwavering discipline and startling collective strength. Confident after the trap succeeded, fire ants released triumph pheromones, raising morale across their front lines. But the army ant colony answered with rage pheromones, igniting a cold, relentless drive to retaliate. Fire ants narrowed key tunnels into deadly funnels, where a few defenders could hold far larger forces. Army ants arranged their bodies into layered shields, preparing to absorb the first devastating blow. For a heartbeat, both armies stood still, their pheromones swirling like storm fronts clashing underground. Fire ants charged in explosive waves, overwhelming the narrow passage with precision and blistering speed. Army ants answered with brute force, collapsing forward in numbers so massive they reshaped the tunnel floor. Fire ant soldiers injected venom repeatedly, aiming to disable the oncoming flood before it fully surged. Army ants latched in unison, slicing through opponents with frightening mechanical precision. Bodies stacked quickly, forming biological barricades that altered terrain in real time. Recognizing swelling numbers, fire ants pulled back into narrower corridors built for tactical defense. Army ants surged into the tunnels, determined to press the advantage and drown resistance through sheer momentum. Fire ant engineers collapsed flanking passages, forcing army ants into a deadly single-file choke zone. Army ant tacticians sensed sudden airflow changes, instantly recognizing a strategic narrowing ahead. Fire ant decoys sprinted through tunnels, laying confusing scent paths to disrupt enemy navigation. Army ant leaders divided forces, sending a silent detachment into a higher tunnel route. Fire ant sensors picked up vibrations from the ceiling, realizing a surprise flank was forming. Guards reinforced the Queen's Chamber, forming a layered perimeter against possible infiltration attempts. Army Ant infiltrators pierced the upper clay, dropping directly into Fire Ant defensive corridors. Fire Ant squads rushed upward, forming tight formations to halt the unexpected aerial breach. Army Ant soldiers dropped in disciplined intervals, overwhelming defenders through precision timing. Fire ants unleashed high-frequency venom strikes, targeting incoming attackers before they could stabilize. Army ants used expendable units to absorb venom, protecting high-value soldiers behind them. Alarm pheromones surged through the colony, triggering mass mobilization from distant chambers. Fresh army ant units poured through the opening, rapidly amplifying offensive pressure. Fire ants activated heat-producing groups, raising temperature to weaken invading muscles. Army ants forced rotation cycles, swapping overheated soldiers for fresh ones to maintain momentum. Defenders triggered controlled collapses, isolating small groups of army ant invaders. Army ants tore through fallen dirt with unstoppable fury, rebuilding pathways within minutes. Elite fire ants locked mandibles and limbs, ready to hold the critical chamber at all cost. 
Army Ant Commanders pushed simultaneous strikes from above, front, and flank corridors. The Fire Ant defensive wall shuddered as overwhelming numbers forced cracks through its formation. Sensing danger closing in, the Queen initiated an emergency relocation into deeper tunnels. Army ant scent trackers locked onto faint queen pheromones, accelerating underground pursuit. Fire ant units collapse tunnels intentionally, buying critical seconds for queen escape. Army ant structural workers restored airflow holes, reconstructing pathways with shocking speed. A final battalion of fire ant soldiers anchored themselves, ready for a stand to the last. The army ants unleashed their largest formation yet, flooding the chamber like living liquid. Fire ants sprayed rare acidic venom reserves, turning the battlefield into blistering chaos. Army ants constructed vertical towers of their own soldiers to bypass venom zones. Fire ant elites used explosive leg power to leap onto tower climbers mid-air. Despite losses, the army ant phalanx advanced with mechanical discipline and terrifying unity. Fire ant ranks thinned rapidly, their defensive formations collapsing under sheer numerical pressure. Army ants snapped through the final barrier, entering the corridor leading straight to the queen. The queen emitted a final pheromone burst, rallying every surviving soldier nearby. Hundreds of fire ants surged forward, forming a living barricade between the queen and death. Army ants slammed into the last defenders, initiating the most brutal clash of the entire war. The overloaded chamber cracked apart, burying both armies as the tunnel ceiling gave way. When dust settled, movement faded, leaving behind a silent expanse of shattered earth. Against all odds, the queen crawled from a hidden escape pocket carved earlier. The few survivors gathered around the queen, preparing to rebuild the fallen colony. Army ants finally withdrew, mission incomplete, leaving fire ants battered but alive.